Hello guys and welcome to a new Star Division 2 video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you game one of two games between Vesley and Gonzo in season six of the Star Division 2 League. Today they are playing on Sluts Quest and on our left in the red we have Gonzo playing on the allied side using the second infantry Indian head which is the second US and the balanced deployment type. And on our right in the blue team, we have Vesley using the 28 Jaeger on the Axis side with the Maverick deployment type. So my content on Star Division 2 has been a bit sporadic lately. I've been suffering uh, with a bit of lack of motivation. I've got a terrible sleeping pattern at the moment. But if there's one thing that really gets me back in the mood for Star Division 2, it is competitive content. I really, really enjoy competitive casts. And in this case, I'm going to be covering the playoffs of the Steel Division 2 League, which have now started. Now, this game that you're about to see is not part of that. It's actually part of the regular season of Season 6 of the Steel Division 2 League. The reason I'm deciding to cover it was because it is basically part of the decider as to why Gonzo and Vesley are placed as they are in the playoff bracket. So these games are actually pretty important because at this point in the in the league, both Gonzo and Vesley were top two in their group. So we've got a show on our hands, that's for sure. Gonzo with the second US and Vesley with the 28th Jaeger. Let's have a quick look at what they got down. So a Fokowolf coming out quickly there from Vesley at the start. Recon Fokowolf's interesting to see. But Gonzo at the top here, Ranger Marauders, two sets of engineers, M3 Howitzer, rifles and engineers. Further down we've got some Ranger Marauders, lots of Rangers heading into the town with an M3 Howitzer. And on the bottom side, M3 Howitzer uh, with three rifles early, M1 gun and the Ranger Marauders with the engineer leader following them up, them up to give some veterancy. There's also an M1 gun in there and two M5s on the bottom side. Off map coming in early for Vesley on the right hand side that's going to be trying to hit some of the units of Gonzo. Pack 40 unloaded early to make Gonzo unload early and in the range of the off map. Gonzo is going to be trying to work out where the off map's coming down and it looks like Vesley might have mind gamed Gonzo a bit thinking Gonzo thought that maybe it would be on the flag a bit further up and instead uh, Gonzo therefore unloaded a bit further back while he's concentrating on that. Pack 40 takes out one of the rifles before it unloads. That's really nice. M3 Howitzer going to be engaging the M uh, MG42 though. So let's have a quick look at these units. Two Jaegers on the top side for Vesley heading up there. Jaeger Sharpshooter, Marder, MG42. Uh, looks like the Rangers are going to get out of there. Only one squad went down into the town. There's going to be Jaeger Pioneer with Erzas Thropen, Jaeger Führer, Jaeger Sharpshooter in the middle. Erzas Thropen, Jaeger Sharpshooter on the bottom side. Two Jaeger. Uh, Jaeger Pioneer and the Jaeger Schafschutzer with the Jaeger Führer to give them the extra venerancy there. So in the town, uh, smart move from Vesley here using the Erzatz Trooper to basically screen his better infantry. Uh, the Erzatz Trooper will become under fire from things like these range marauders or maybe the rangers for example and then he can use the Jaeger Pioneers in the town maybe out of line of sight to lob grenades and get the kills easier. It's funny to see this Focke Wolf strafing it only has two machine guns uh, they're not very effective at strafing it whatsoever. Uh, looks like on the top side, both those half tracks did go down. Uh, maybe one of the infantry squads got killed before and unloaded, but those engineers are definitely not going to make it to the top side, and that allows the Jaegers to move in there. Vesley with a fast 14 to 10. We're off to a very very explosive start in this, uh, in these two games in the season six of the Steel Division Two League. So the M5A1 going to be pushing up now. Great support tanks these. They do have their HE and the two machine guns which are pretty difficult to deal with if you don't have any sort of longer range AT, something like a Panzerschreck or maybe even I guess an AT rifle might do the trick on an M5A1. But here comes the off map plane again. Off map planes at the start are actually pretty effective in a 1v1 because it's very rare that you see early use of AA. So Vesley managing to get both the strikes out of this off map plane early on is really nice because now Gonzo's invested in the Bofors and they're going to be pretty much useless. All they're going to do is stop the Fokker Wolf and they, I guess if the off map plane comes into play recon games then maybe um, that would be a thing but either way these Bofors, that's a lot of points investment 
90 points apiece, 180 points put into AA, that pretty much is going to do nothing for the time being. So, Jaeger Pioneers here trying to make a move onto the Rangers. Rangers now being used to smoke forwards. You can see that Gonzo is just making a smoke wall so that he can get these Rangers on top of the Jaeger Pioneers. Meanwhile, Jaeger Shaft shoots to taking shots at the rifles early. They're going to get some free hits in. Uh, Gonzo's got to be really careful in this because if he kind of moves through this smoke and there's a little gap and then the Jaegers open up with their MG, the Rangers take a lot of damage. You can see one of them's already pretty low. Bockerwolf there. Might actually go down to these bofers. Came in with a strafing run. The off map doesn't look to have killed too much. The rifles early just kind of forced back. Does give Vesley the 15 to 9. Last bofer shot does not kill the Focke Wolf either. We've still got that Rika capability. Rangers here really trying to do their best to clean out infantry in this town, but Vesley just kind of walking around them. Oh, that Jaeger though, no cover for them whatsoever. Oh, they got deleted by the Thompsons and the Grease Guns and that Flamethrower. Very, very quick kill there for Gonzo. Those Rangers are really, really scary. They come in with the two-star veterancy and against units out in the open from within heavy cover. They're super, super effective, but the Jaeger Pioneers here with their G43s and the MG42 easily able to dispatch the Rangers as they were not moved behind the building to remain in cover. Jaeger Shaft shoots are going to be, in the meantime, taking out the M1 gun down here. And meanwhile on the top, the Jaeger Shaft shoots are just kind of scouting and shooting anything that's on the edge of the tree lines. Is that another off-map plane? Unless those get three strikes. Sometimes it's hard to tell if uh, air off-map these days gets two or three strikes. I guess it's the same for, for ground forces. It's very specific to each division now. But I think that's probably a second plane. I think those 172 mils, they are only two strikes. So Vesely really relying on early off map, and that must be, must be really, really frustrating for Gonzo to deal with, especially since the Bofors did not shoot down the biplane and stop that off map from being called in. M5A1 is going to try and do its best here against the Jaegers. These are good over time uh, for pinning things down, when, especially when something can't fire back at you because of obviously all the armor you've got. But you really need to be able to scout for the M5A1s, which is basically what the rifles are doing here. By advancing onto contact, they will allow the Jaegers to fire on them. That gives the M5A1 a target and so on. If that if that infantry is not here, this Jaeger is probably going to, well, basically would be um, hard to spot, just like this one. And therefore, Panzerfaust does the job. Nice Focke-Wolf bombing strike on the top side here, takes out the M3 howitzer. Vesely really smart there to use the Focke-Wolf on the top side. He knows there's two bofers on the bottom side, so bombing up there, he's not going to be affected at all. Jaeger's coming in really close actually to the M4A3. They're trying to get the Panzerfaust onto the M4A3. Not going to be enough, that's going to get pinned down. Uh, the Jaeger Pioneer is not able to really do much about that. Unless the M4A3 is damaged, in which case they might be able to use their HE a bundle grenade to kill it but either way the Jaegers forcing them back super important but he does have a Jaegerführer looks like Vesey's going to try and sneak that up instead pack 40 is on the main road which stops the M4A3 from really maneuvering onto the main road as well M10's trying to engage the Stug on the top side of the town now we see the off map plane coming in to secure Vesey's position on this top side Jaeger again getting really close to the M4A3 is going to be looking for the Panzerfaust shot. Is Gonzo able to reverse in time? He is. M4A3 stays alive. Uh, super crucial that Gonzo keeps that there so that he can keep whittling down the infantry of Vesley. At the moment, it seems like Vesley's just got so much value out of his infantry engagements with Gonzo. Pushed Gonzo out of position. The off map's really done a good job. I think this 172 is just being used to potentially like, as recon, but I guess it doesn't really have recon. Oh, I guess it does have recon capability. Sorry. Yeah, sometimes it's uh, kind of confusing. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. It depends on the type of the plane. In this case, yeah, he's just using it as a recon aircraft now, I assume. So that must have had three strikes, and now he's just floating it about. But the Stur 42 here. Within the 2,000 meter range of this Bofors is going to probably knock it out. There it goes. 
and that's a 90 points that basically didn't shoot anything down and then got killed so that's a really really poor investment for Gonzo gets no value out of that AA whatsoever and it's just making it harder and harder for Gonzo really difficult for him to reinforce this top side and maintain control of these flags now since Wesley has made so much ground here and wiped out all of the units on the top side. It's already 17 to 7, 11 minutes until Vesley takes victory in this game. Stuart 42 is under fire from the M1 gun. It's not an ideal engagement for it. He doesn't have to engage the M1 gun from that range either. He can just move back. With the range uh, changes, actually, it's going to make competitive play uh, pretty interesting. Uh, I haven't really covered, uh, obviously, any of the Steel Division League since the range changes came into play. So, the Stur here, in this case, has 2,000 meter range, M1 gun only 1,500. And that means that technically, the Stur can sit back here and fire position the M1 gun all day, whilst the M1 gun can't fire back. And that's something that you can, you're really going to see a lot in these competitive games. As I continue through uh, these couple games with Gonzo and Vesley, uh, the basically the seed playoff and then the playoffs in the finals. Um, you're going to see lots of interesting gameplay now. Like Marder going to be having a go at the M1 gun by the looks of things. And the shaft shooter finishes it off. Stug 3 supporting the push on the bottom side. Stug 3s, especially with 3 star veterancy, are very scary. They do get decent rate of fire, like 7 round per minute rate of fire base. And then you get the extra rate of fire from the veteran C, pushes them to over 10 round per minute rate of fire, which is really, really nice and really, really scary for these units because a Stug has very good penetration against like an M4, for example. And the M4A3, I think it's trying to use, or it was trying to fire a heat shell at the Marder. Gonzo's actually turned off the heat shell and now is engaging the Marder with HE. You can't see the Pack 40, although the Pack 40 might just die if those HE shells miss. Bessie's actually just going to give that an attack order onto the M4A3 now. The M10 Destroyer does have the APCR, since it is a US division, and that will be able to engage the Marder at a range of the Marder itself. The Marder only has 1,750 meter range, whilst the M10's APCR has one has 2,000 meter range. But the Stug has managed to get a shot there onto the M10. And well, just like that, Festi had a commanding position in that game. 11 minutes, 7 seconds passes, and Gonzo gives it up. So, there you go. First game that I've casted for a very long time in the Steel Division League. And Vesley wipes the floor with Gonzo. That is not something I, expected a uh, I expect a lot of you... Uh, would have expected to see uh, going into this. But a very, very good performance uh, from Vesley there. Um, his initial setup was pretty standard, I would say, for the 28th Jaeger, other than maybe the Fokowolf Recon. I'm not sure how much that really benefited him. I guess potentially it gave him good locations for the off-map strikes, um, which were certainly doing a lot of damage to Gonzo. Well, they, I guess they didn't really do that much damage, but they certainly forced him back. As you can see here, only killed one ranger unit, killed an engineer leader, and that's it. But they forced Gonzo out of position to the point where Vesley's infantry kind of cleaned up afterwards, and that was super important. Um, Fokowolf uh, 190 F8 there with the bombing strike onto the M3. Taking out those M3 howitzers is pretty important early. They're a really strong support weapon that has 2,000 meter range, really strong HE versus support weapons and infantry. And wiping them out early on just really, really helps uh, Vesley's infantry advance unhindered. So really, really nice. Uh, then bringing in the Stugs later into the game just really like sealed the deal. Having that armoured support alongside already successful infantry, you can just see how limited the kills were from Gonzo in this game. Like, the infantry um, from Vesley here just winning in all counts, and the Marder dealing with the half-tracks on the top side, it just seemed like Vesley had the answer everywhere on the map. And that's a very, very solid game there from Vesley. Makes... Uh, 
me. Very interested to see how he's going to do in the playoffs, in the finals of the Steel Division League. That's it. Game one. Quite a quick one, actually. Um, but I'll be moving straight on to the second game. And uh, hopefully I will see you guys then. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. And I will see you in the next one. Goodbye. Yeah,